Um, okay, can everyone hear me all right? It's coming through good? Okay, amazing. Um, good afternoon, my name is Ariana and I am the head of research at Equity Lab. So at Equity Lab, we build solutions to accelerate trust and innovation in AI. And we actually designed a suite of tools that allow you to um, uh, make your models more collaborative and more safe. Uh, and we do this through something that we call the AI Integrity Suite. And so what we do is we actually provide attestations of each step of the AI lifecycle, providing authenticity. And so within our AI Integrity Suite, we have four products. We have the AI Lineage Explorer, the AI Governance Studio, um, the AI Integrity Fabric, which is actually the foundation of the Integrity Suite, as well as an attribution ledger. So the foundation of the AI Integrity Suite is something that we refer to as the AI Integrity Fabric, which is a framework that weaves together Web3 protocols and standards as well as smart contract based engines, as well as enterprise integrations. And together, these establish the authenticity of your end-to-end -end AI workflow. So each step of your AI lifecycle receives an attestation. And these attestations can be viewed through your AI Lineage Explorer. So this provides a unified and real-time view of your lifecycle, as well as any distributed workflows that you may have. Agnostic, actually, of where your data is stored and where your model is deployed. Next is our Governance Studio, and so here we actually allow you to enable binding policies um, that relate to your AI training. And so this is really important for things like compliance um, and acting responsible AI. Next we have the AI Attribution Ledger, which is where you can actually incentivize and reward participation, which democratizes AI innovation and collaboration. So the power of the AI integrity fabric actually lies in separating out the integrity of the data from the data itself. Voila. <laughs> so what this allows you to do is actually create um, a way to separate uh, the two. And the integrity is what can be traced through the AI Lineage Explorer. And this is where each step of the attestation receives a notarization. Um, so the AI integrity fabric allows you to uh, weave together these different attestations. Um, and so we actually worked uh, to create hardware-based proofs with NVIDIA and Intel um, to create hardware-based proofs of computation. And then we also have created new standards for verified credentials that actually notarize each step of that process. And then together, these notarizations can combine into cryptographic certificates and these cryptographic certificates can actually automate business logic using things like smart contracts. So together, the AI Integrity Suite provides a new sense of verifiability across all areas of your AI lifecycle. So what it allows you to do is actually to create a verifiable lineage of your model so that you can prove the traceability and the transparency of your model. You also can ensure that AI policies, again, remain binding. And then through attribution, you can ensure that you are incentivizing and rewarding stakeholders for their participation, again, democratizing AI innovation. So all of these tools together, we think of as creating smarter and safer AI. And so together, we think that creates self-sovereign AI, which we think is a better alternative to the centralized trillion dollar systems um, that we see with AI today. And it's exciting because we actually um, aren't just keeping this as a research project, we actually have established our tools um, through a project called Climate GPT, which is an ensemble of climate-specific AI models, three of which we fine-tuned on Llama 2, and one of which we trained from scratch. And then we also are excited that the Endowment for Climate Intelligence, which is an organization that we created to train these models, is the first DAO to be registered, AI DAO to be registered, under uh, the DLT Foundation um, registration in the Abu Dhabi global market. And it was important as we were training Climate GPT that we were mindful of the partners and collaborators that we used, as well as the methodologies and the principles that we used, including um, and also the uh, energy sources and power consumption uh, for the model. So I'm going to turn it over to Andrew, who will speak about that. So hey everyone, I'm Andrew Stanko. I'm on the operations team here for Climate GPT. So I want to walk you through in the time we have remaining basically how all the cryptographic tools that Ariana mentioned and walked us through combined with an infrastructure story in order to make Climate GPT and that AI DAO we're talking about possible. And I guess the most exciting thing and why we're here at the Filecoin booth today is that Filecoin and the ecosystem had a really big story, like impact, in helping us to tell that story. 
So one of the first things that happened at the outset, when we were looking to train Climate GPT, we knew it was an ambitious challenge to bring all these stakeholders together. So we also knew we needed to lead by example. Like the team here, we took that basically as a challenge. Right? So for the first part of, the, of, of creating the model, training, we knew we, we had to use green energy. There was no choice right, for a model on climate change. We used it basically in the Pacific Northwest using the most energy efficient GPUs, H100s. Like we were, we were really proud to do that in time for, uh, for COP28. Also for the Genesis node, basically, we stored it in the Emirates. It was at the largest single site solar facility called Aldafra. It's two gigawatts, powers over 200,000 homes there. It's our site, it was like basically where we initially kicked off the model, right? Additionally, for all of the weights and biases, like all of the weights and biases, we, uh, we stored them here in Las Vegas with Switch, right? For inference, we actually switched over, we went over to Ireland. That's hosted basically powered by wind energy in one of their most energy efficient facilities there. And then sort of finally, because we knew for any sort of anchoring or attestations, we had to choose the most energy efficient blockchains. We chose to anchor our attestations on Hedera and on Ethereum. Right. But really, that's not all. Basically, we wanted to actually just highlight and accelerate all of the great work we're doing here with Filecoin. So what I want to walk you through today, if the video works, because this is the PDF, which I don't think it does. Um, give me a second. There we go. So what that is, is basically showcasing over two years of work the Equity Lab team has done, basically taking everything from layer ones to DPIN to DeFi and coming together to create that fabric that Ariana talked about. So what I can quickly show you here is basically a deeper dive into one of those attestations. What you can see is a SID, right? That's basically a hash of the data assets, right? You've got a DID, which is a digital identifier. That's some organization signing or proving what they did. And then you've got the attestations that Ariana was talking about, right there on Ethereum and Hedera. But like, we're really excited today. It's kind of the reason why we came to the booth. We're excited to say that all that data is actually also being stored on Filecoin. We're doing it in sort of two ways, if you want to take a look with me. So if you go back to the Lineage Explorer Ariana walked us through, you can see sort of that registration we talked about, right? And then if we go down a little bit, again, we're doing the PDF version, so I don't know if it's going to work. But there we go. You've got basically both that data stored on IPFS, what we did ahead of COP28, and you've got it stored now on Filecoin. So we're super excited to work with great partners. We worked for IPFS, we worked with Picnic, we stored that data in Switch. It's a solar facility, it's amazing. I would go there if you get a chance. I would never recommend touring a data center, but it's fantastic, right? And then now, ahead of here at Consensus, we worked with Banyan to store data, again, using that green energy ethos, right, in, in basically near Montreal right, in a data center that's powered by hydroelectric uh, energy. Right, that's not the final step. We also have to involve more parts of the ecosystem too. So Nova Energy, you may know them as Filecoin Green. We asked them to come in and audit our work and to sort of prove that everything I just said actually happened. And we're super excited. We got a great score. We think it's reflective of our work and also we think it sets an example for what open source AI projects can do, you know, when they really put their minds to it. Right. So I guess the big thing, like the secret thing that we had for doing all this work was that AI is deeply collaborative. It takes infrastructure, it takes data, machine, uh, data scientists, machine learning. It is a very interdisciplinary and collaborative effort. And that was the way that we were successful, right? So what we kind of feel like the sort of enduring promise of Web3 is that it creates this innovation and trust. It's what Ariana's talked about. And like now more than ever in an election year, at any time, it's what we need. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much.